What are vestments? Why does the pastor look different than everybody else on a Sunday morning? Why does he need all those robes? Well, that's just the point. The pastor should look different than everybody else. When a man is called into the preaching office, he becomes, as St. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 4, a servant to all and a steward of God's mysteries. When I conduct my duties on a Sunday morning, I don't want people to see Jacob or even Pastor Benson, but I want them to see and hear Christ alone in all things. In the liturgy, we speak differently than we do in everyday conversation. Some people get dressed up on Sunday mornings, and those who are stewards of the mysteries of God must shroud themselves so that they can fade to the background and Christ can be presented at the forefront of all we do in our worship together. There is no thou shalt in regards to vestments, but there is a command from God to keep the Sabbath day holy. One way we do that here at St. John's is by covering our pastors with prayer and with clothing that reminds both him and all who would see and hear him that we are gathered to receive the great and wonderful gifts from the Holy Trinity, not to hear one man's opinion on God. The most basic article of clergy wear is the cassock. It's a long black gown, often turned up at the collar. The first thing a pastor does before leading the liturgy is wash his hands. This is both ritual washing and actual washing. Ritual to remind the pastor that he's handling the holy things of God, and actual washing because it's gross to give people bread to eat and wine to drink with dirty hands. The prayer during this washing is, Cleanse my hands, O Lord, from all stain, that pure in mind and body I may be worthy to serve thee. For Eucharistic services, that is, the service of the Lord's Supper, the next article is called the Amis. The prayer is as follows. Place, O Lord, the helmet of salvation upon my head to repel the assaults of the devil. With the language of Ephesians 6, the pastor asks God to silence the devil from whispering into the preacher's ear during divine worship. Next comes the alb. Its name shares the same root as the Latin word for white, a biblical image of purity and cleanliness. Thus the prayer here is, Cleanse me, O Lord, and purify my heart, that being made white in the blood of the Lamb, I may attain everlasting joy. With the alb, the pastor has shifted from an all-black gown to an all-white garment, a reminder of the gifts that flow from the cross of Christ and through the waters of holy baptism. Then the cincture, which is a type of belt. Gird me, O Lord, with a girdle of purity, and quench in me the fire of concupiscence, that the grace of temperance and chastity may abide in me. Like the tightness of the Amis, the cincture reminds the pastor that he is standing in the Holy of Holies. He is not to let his mind wander to sinful places, but must remain prayerfully focused on his Sunday task. The stole is the most recognizable mark of the pastoral office. He prays, Give me again, O Lord, the stole of immortality, which I lost by the transgression of my first parents, and although I am unworthy to come into thy holy mystery, grant that I may attain everlasting felicity. Atop the whiteness of the alb, a stole is laid to remind the pastor that he inherited Adam's sin. Nonetheless, in the divine service, we are granted forgiveness and given promises of everlasting joy. The stole is crossed to remind the pastor that he is not a sole authority unto himself, 
but he is a servant, both to his congregation and to his overseers. Finally, the Chasuble. O Lord, who hast said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light, grant that I may so bear it as to attain thy grace. Amen. There are many different designs and patterns, all of them good so long as they remind all who look upon it of Christ. In this pattern, the Gothic, or Y orphreys, invoke the shape of the cross. This is particularly powerful during the service of the sacrament, when seeing only the cross of Christ, all who are gathered hear the words of Jesus on the night he was betrayed, and don't so much as see even the face of the minister. With the prayers completed, the liturgy is ready to begin. For non-Eucharistic services, matins or vespers, or a funeral where there is no Lord's Supper celebrated, the minister dons his cassock, but with a surplice over it. This is similar to an awl, but it's not as long. If preaching, the minister may wear a stole appropriate to the season, or a tippet, also called preaching scarf. This is an English tradition that is meant to make a distinction between a service of prayer or preaching and a sacramental or Eucharistic service. The preaching bands have been worn occasionally in both English and German Lutheran circles. Their various shapes have been assigned different meanings over the years, but we shouldn't make too much of symbolism here. Whether vesting for the liturgy or donning a clerical shirt to go on a hospital visit, Lutheran pastors shroud themselves so that we may learn to die to ourselves and live for Christ, and in doing so, bring Christ to the forefront of all we say and do, especially in our worship life together. It's always and only about Jesus. We'll see you on Sunday morning.